Department of Parks and Recreation to order. I am Michelle Cummings Steele, Vice Chair of the Board of Parks and Recreation. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I read now the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after an entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Moving now to the consideration of minutes. Have you all had an opportunity to read the minutes of our August meeting? I'd like to make an edit to them. Yes. Um, <clears throat> in an effort to just accurately reflect what happens in the meeting, I think there was a... Um, uh, a comment or a question that Mr. Johnson Johnston raised about the Miracle Field um, and the ballparks and whether or not that that was a uh, you know kind of what the status was. So I just want to make sure that the minutes reflect that 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 is still being worked on by the parks. Any other comments? Is there a motion for approval with the aforementioned edit? Uh, second. Uh, thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you so much. We're moving now to Metro Council referrals. Are there any referrals from council members present? Director Odom. Uh, council member Sharon Hurt is here today and does not have, you have something to say? Thank you, Director Odom and Madam Chair. I just want to uh, thank you all for your continued service. I was uh, appointed as the new chair for this uh, year for the Parks Board and just wanted to come to make sure that I said hello. And it's always good to see you all and thank you very much for the work that you continue to do. I look forward to us uh, building better parks and doing great things this year. Thank you. Okay. We're moving now to, well, one moment. I have a point of personal privilege. My uh, graduate assistant, Megan, is here. Thank you for coming. She's a new student in our public administration degree at Lipscomb. Thank you for being here. Old business moving to 07-22-04. Staff requests approval of an easement on Lowe's property that is adjacent to Brookmead Park. The easement will allow for installation of fencing and we will and, and will identify where the fence will be constructed and allow for parks to maintain. The fence will be connected to two existing fences that are on Lowe's property. The purpose of the fence is to help secure the park and close it for construction and renovation. The acquisition committee met this morning. Jeff Haynes, is there a report from the committee? We met and recommend approval. Thank you so much. I'll accept, uh, I'm sorry, are there any, uh, any more discussion concerning that? Thank you so much. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you so much. The motion passes. We'll move now to the consent agenda. I will accept a motion to accept the consent agenda in its entirety. Thank you so much. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. We're moving now to new business. We're going to take um, one of our reports out of order, 09-22-09. Ms. Mary Bird, representing Reclaim Brookmead, requests permission to address the Parks Board regarding Brookmead Park. Mary Bird. Hello, you have three minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys um, working with us and putting the easement in with Lowe's. 
Um, Brookmitty has been a crisis for over a year. The first time we reported to you was a year ago exactly. Most of you were present, and we were telling you about the crisis that Brookmead had become. It remains a crisis. It remains an epic failure of this city and this park board to maintain a public community park. I want you to see what our latest media has been. Brookmead Park, stolen from the public. We are not able to use our, our, our community park. The homeless camp that is there is protected by predators that are using it as a shield. There are people in this park that have mental illness, that have addiction issues. They're not being helped in the way they should be helped because of the predators that have surrounded this park. So our park has been stolen from the community and we feel that it is an epic failure of this park board and the city that we can't use our own public park in Greenway. Public park encampment, the only one Metro allows. This is the only public park in Greenway where Metro, the mayor, allows for there to be an illegal encampment. There are over 50 nonprofits that are working diligently trying to house the individuals that are homeless, chronic homeless individuals that this city has failed to help. And one of the places that they found that they can stay is Brookmead Park in Greenway. This is not acceptable to us. There are ways, there are pathways, there are hope. There's ways for these people to be helped. And we want this park to be a part of that. We want this board to be a part of that. You shouldn't have to live without running water and electricity. You should not have to do your activities of daily living in a bucket and take it down to the Cumberland River and dump it in because you only have one porta potty and you can't get out of the park. You're stuck there, you're trapped. EMT calls, over 134 EMT calls in the last three months. Transport, the only number that they'll give us for how much this is costing our city, $650 for a base rate, $13 for a loaded mile to a hospital. This doesn't even address the individuals that refuse help once this has been activated because they're afraid to leave the camp. They're afraid that their things will be stolen. They're afraid that when they come back, they won't have anything left because this is not a place that a human being deserves to live. It's been declared uninhabitable by the, by the public health department. There's no reason an individual should be in this park for any reason right now. It has been decimated by the homeless camp. There, there's no reason any individual should be in this park. When we came to you last year, Brookmead had three cleanups since then that we all participated in. Every single board member from Brookmead, every community member, we have over 1,200 people on our Facebook page. We have over 300 people on our email list. We presented to countless organizations and charrettes. Thank you, is that my time is up? So inside Brookmead Park, there's now almost 1,000 shopping carts from Lowe's and Walmart. There are 60 people that are there. We had them down to 15 people in the winter. They could have been moved at that point to a safe place to where they could be cared for. It is a problem, it is a crisis. They need to be rescued. And the DA and the social, the, the judicial system needs to address the predators that are helping keeping them in, keep them in this park. Fire, drugs, and assault. We have abuse of women, we have prostitution, we have men that are exposing themselves to children as they drive to Lowe's and Walmart. We have all these problems that come from this park in Greenway being used as an illegal encampment. We're handing out the brochures. We want you guys to see what we are saying. We need help. This is a crisis. We are crying out for you to do something. The members of this board have the power to make a difference. You should not listen to people that say, we're gonna give them a handout, not a hand up. These people deserve to be assisted with their addiction. The Sheriff's Department has the Behavioral Care Center, which we saw one of our campers go into today. I was there in Judge Holt's chambers when that happened. He was not released, he chose to get help. There needs to be another pathway besides coming back 
to an encampment where you cannot get services. There needs to be transitional housing, gap housing, rapid rehousing with extensive services for these people. The park board can serve lunches at the community centers. Maybe we should serve the homeless a lunch at the community center. Maybe we should hold classes at some of the community centers as how to proceed on a pathway to hope. So we appreciate your time. We hope that you guys understand that we're desperate. Our community has suffered and we appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Bird. Are there any questions from our board members present? Thank you for your emails. Thank you for your calls. Thank you for your diligence. We hear you. We have a meeting set for September 26th. That is a uh, call meeting, a special meeting for our parks board. We'll be meeting at 6 p.m. at um, Bellevue Community Center to, to begin the conversation to tackle the issue because we have heard you. That's exciting. And I would also like to say, I know that as the chairperson, you can form a committee and mm -hmm. you can put a non-board member on that committee to deal with special issues. We believe that this is not only a special issue, it's a crisis Absolutely. and it needs to be dealt with. So we would appreciate a committee. We would appreciate some non-board members on there that are experts. This city has experts. April Calvin with the Homeless Impact Division has been working for over a decade on this. You've been through Judith Tackett, Jay Survey, and now you have April Calvin. You need to listen to these people. You don't need to listen to the people that are detractors that say, leave them alone. You can't leave people alone. It's a death camp if you do that. They have to be rescued. They have to know that there is a pathway to hope for them. Thank you. So one, just one question. It went from 60 to 15 back to 60. That's right, in the what, winter. What do you think? Is, was it the cold? It, it, is, it, it is the cold. A lot of people at Brookmead, and I've lived there for over 30 years, so I was there before Lowe's and Walmart. I was there before Brookmead was put in. I was there when there was only a fruit stand. Um, when the cold weather comes, they're offered shelter, and a lot of them go to shelter, or they go back to their family members, or they go back to the homes that they actually have. We have a wide variety of people in Brookmead. So in the winter when we had the flood, okay, we were down to 15 people. We called the Office of Emergency Management. We called the Red Cross. We called the Depart the the Homeless Impact Division. We called every agency that we had educated ourselves about trying to get them to come get the 15 people that were left. No one came. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Bird. And I would say that it has been over a year that we've been hearing this. And I don't think either one of you disagree with anything that has been said. Uh, I'm just the kind of person that believe like Nike, just do it. And, and, and a lot of it, I know that we have red tape that we go through in order to get some things done. But I was thinking that perhaps we can work with the Sheriff's Department and maybe get a cleanup done uh, in between the time, between now and September 26th. Is it anything that we can do right now to, to show that we hear what our neighbors are saying? I have been to uh, Brookmead Park and I too have seen the deterioration of it over the years. Uh, so I am uh, committed and I would be committed to you as well as to our neighbors to see can we move forward because I believe that the addressing of this problem is based on the political will. Absolutely. And I have no problem speaking and trying to move forward to make this better for the Parks Board and the things that you want to do as well as finding some type of compromise between what it is that the neighbors are asking, what we have to do as a government. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. We look forward to part. And would you all just commit to, to me that you will also work with me as we move forward to try to address the, and, and fix this problem? We look forward to partnering with our Metro Council. We do have a lot of questions we hope to get answered on the 26th, especially around the resolution. We've, um, 
that has been passed by our Metro Council in 2021. There is a cleanup that is scheduled for, that date just went out of my head. The 16th. Uh, this where, Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is on the schedule, but we do look forward to partnering. Can you tell Absolutely. me what time? And who's going to be participating in it? The neighbors and... Because I, I really don't think, I mean, I just look at um, the, the brochures that they've passed out, yeah. all of the posters that they have, they're bearing the cost, and I know it doesn't look like as much, but they've been on this for quite some time, and I just think that it's upon us, incumbent upon us, to, to really uh, let them know that their voices are heard. heard, and we are mm -hmm. moving forward and doing something. We agree. Okay, so is that a yes that you're going to commit to work with me as well? We are committed to partnering with the Metro Council. We will work with you, absolutely. Thank you very, very much. Absolutely, you know we will. Thank you. That's my sore war. There's a question about the, the cleanup on Friday. I've asked Phil Luckett from our maintenance division. Thank you. To, yes. Because uh, was a question. <clears throat> Metro Homeless Impact Division, water, uh, Metro Parks, and then there is a huge volunteer effort that will be going in to do cleanup. I think there'll be like two 30 yard dumpsters down there. We're gonna be doing some stuff, things with the shopping carts and getting those unloaded and put in dumpsters. And then we're also gonna be handing out uh, gloves and grabbers and, and trash bags and stuff as far as, far as our part of that. And there will be a number of our staff down there. Yeah, will you name those departments again for me? Metro Water Metro, Metro Parks. Water, Metro Homeless Impact Division, and Metro Parks. Thank those you Those so are the much. ones I know for sure. Thank you. And, Madam Chair, if I might, I, yes, I just may. want to, to also acknowledge that this will not be the first time that we have participated in a cleanup Absolutely. Uh, at Brookmead Park over the many, many years. The issue, I think, is... is um, reclaim uh, Brookmead and, and concern neighbors and... Uh, the constituency in general, and we acknowledge um, if there is not a permanent solution yep. Yep. to these issues of um, unhoused um, people experiencing homelessness, then um, our team and volunteers clean up as they have many times in the past, and then, uh, you know, a few days later, within that same day. Um, the park and Greenway and area around it is right back to the same condition. And that is really the issue. Um, as a, again, we've cleaned up many, many, many times, um, even before the past year. Um, we've cleaned up a number of times, um, and, and we've got to work towards some permanent solutions. Right, and I, I agree wholeheartedly with that, but is it possible that we can have some consistency? You know, while we may come as neighbors and clean up on Friday, could we work with the Sheriff's Department and possibly get people to come next week if necessary to do it? If we stay consistent to making sure that we are addressing the problem, the more likelihood that we are going to get to a place of fixing it, and specifically to those who are making the final decisions about what happens. If they see that we are relentless in our efforts, then perhaps we can get more uh, support from them. So, I mean, I don't know if I need uh, your support to, to reach out to the Sheriff's Department or if I need your approval, but I'll be happy to reach out to the Sheriff and ask if that's something that they would be willing to do and partner with us, as well as you know, water out, I'll call Mr. Honeysucker as soon as I leave mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Sharon Gentry. Yes. And so I, I think it's already been, been acknowledged, but I, I just feel necessary to say it. This is a multifaceted issue. And having worked with the Homeless Commission when Judith Tackett was there, um, just over the years have done the homeless count thing. I've done all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I know that going in and doing the cleanup is gonna exacerbate several aspects of this problem. And so, and, and that there's a budget implication to asking Director Odom to commit to repeatedly on a consistent basis, going in there and doing that physical cleanup, that removal of what is considered, what they consider their property uh, from that park. And so, yeah, so I think right now it's a thing. I think it's a very superficial thing, but it's a thing that will give a visual change to what you see 
but to Director Odom's point, for a small window of time. And so I, I don't know that it's fair to ask the parks uh, director to repeatedly go in there and just provide cleanup um, because we're overburdening her staff. She's already had budget uh, cuts to hit her uh, this year, if I'm not mistaken, and did I imagine that? Uh, already this year. <laughs> I didn't imagine, I didn't think so, already this year. And so I would rather see if there's going to be a, a working together. Let's work together on the long-term solution as well as, as well as whatever these short-term, very cosmetic uh, acts are going to be if that's what's being asked for. Right. In the, mean, in, in the meantime, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure you are aware because... When I was in Leadership Nashville in 2004, I happened to be in a class with uh, uh, our criminal court clerk, uh, Howard Gentry, and I was on his team, and our study group was homelessness. And here we are in 2022, and we're still at that same place. So again, I think it's a matter of political will and prioritizing it and I did not, in my uh, suggestion of there being consistent cleanup, um, commit uh, our director to doing that, but working with other departments to make sure that it's done. Because I think, even though we've got a long-term uh, solution that we need to find, we do have some short-term responsibilities that we need to uh, put into effect to show that we are moving towards a long-term solution. And I think that if we can talk and have these magnificent um, presentations regarding new developments on East Bank, we surely can take care of the one that's already here. Council Lady Hurt, will you uh, be at the meeting on September 26th? Absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, let, we let, have let, commitment. Let me just make sure, um, we have it's 6 p.m.? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I do have it down so I can put it on my schedule to uh, make sure that I will be in I appreciate town. that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We don't, we'd like to respond to Dr. Gentry's comment. Okay. I just want 15 seconds. Okay. Please. I, I just want to say <laughs> that last year when we started shining a light on this, it might have been a little bit about what we saw. But now it's about the people mm -hmm. that are in there. Yes. It's so it's the not people. about pushing the buggies to the front. Right. It's, it's not about loading a dumpster up. It's, not, it's about the fact that those people need services and their items need to be secure. Yes. So we have been slandered in that way. So I don't, I don't want you to think for one minute that we are inconvenienced. It's not about inconvenience. Mm -hmm. It's about people's lives. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I just want to make sure that okay. that is clear for everybody. No, and we have <laughs> never removed okay. anyone's belongings. In fact, when they've gotten their apartments and their places to live, we have furnished their apartments. So we're, I just want you to understand what we're about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and I think that we've heard that from the very beginning. Yes, when you came, that yes, was the sentiment, and I know that that's carried through, and I still hear your heart. Yeah. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. We're going to move now to... I thought that was the... No, that was the he, he was 15 seconds. Thank you. Thank you so much. For Thank you. I'm Tim Tomes with Reclaim Brookmead Park. I want to implore you. My six-year-old granddaughter, I take to school every morning. She's been exposed to male genitals twice in the last two weeks. Um, and from that perspective, we have to look at the community, the children. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. So please... Let's work together and do something to help these people and then protect the children in the community. That's, but thank you very much for my thank 15 you. seconds. Thank you. We're moving to 0922-02. Ms. Ashley Morrison, board member and fundraising chair for Circle Players, requests permission to serve alcohol at the Luby Theater during the following Young Frankenstein performances, October 14th and 15th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m., October 16th, 2022 at 3 p.m., October 20th, 21st, and 22nd, 2022 at 7.30 p.m., October 23rd, 2022 at 3 p.m., October 27th, 28th, 29th at 2 2022 at 7.30 p.m., October 30th, 2022 at 3 p.m., 
Director Odom, are there any other comments, recommendations? Uh, staff recommends approval. These dates had already been approved, but this um, organizer came back and wanted to add alcohol, so that's basically what the request is. So that's what we're considering. Recommend approval. Okay. Is there any discussion? Any questions? I'll accept a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 09-22-03, Ms. Laura Johnson, founder and CEO of Leadership Academy, requests permission to host the following two summer camps for fiscal year 2023 at Percy, Percy Warner Park and Bells Bend Outdoor Center and Beeman Park with waiver of usage fees. Leadership Academy's Camp Twigs, Bells Bend, Beeman, Monday, June 5th through Friday, August 4th, 2023, from 7.45 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. Leadership Academy's Mountain Bike Camp, June, Monday, June 5th through Friday, July 28th, 2023, 7.45 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. Director Odom, are there any, uh, is there a recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Staff recommends approval uh, excluding the waiver of usage fees. Are there any questions or discussion from the board? I have a question. Is this, I mean, I thought that normally these um, permits were issued uh, towards the end of the year. So it is, what, is, is the reason that's coming to us before the normal, um, the normal slate of, of permits? Is that? Yeah, the organizer asked us to move forward with it so they could start marketing in advance a little sooner than December. for permit holders to have time to, I mean, exactly I, what you're saying. I, I think the, the onus is on the permit holder to come to the parks board rather than us um, pursuing them. Okay. Uh, I have a question. How much is the usage fee? It's uh, $10 a camper per, uh, for individual camper, and then they have like a week, so it's a week long camp. So for five days, $10 per camper. And they have, Yes. Per, per no per camp. So it's a week long camp. It ends up I don't know exactly the number. I think last year was about three thousand dollars. Any other comments or questions? All right, I will accept a motion with the thank you. I will accept a motion with uh with the exception of the waiver of usage fees? Move approval. Is there a second? Is that clear, Larisha? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 09-22-04, staff requests approval for submission and ultimate acceptance of renewal, renewal application for the Children and Adult Care Food Program, CACFP for fiscal year 2023. This program provides nutritious meals and snacks for children attending after school programs in 10 community centers. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Is there any discussion from the board? I'll accept a motion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 09-22-05, pursuant to the acceptance of the donation of a 4.4 acre parcel of property adjacent to the Nashville Zoo for a parking garage, Parks Board Agenda Item 12-21-03, December 2021, <laughs> staff requests approval to amend the current lease agreement between Metro Parks and the Nashville Zoo to include the donated parcel. We are still awaiting the revised lease on the lease from the zoo and so we'll defer this to our October 2022 meeting. 09-22-06 Centennial Park Conservancy requests acceptance of a grant of up to $1 million to the Metro Parks Department to design and construct improvements to the historic Centennial Park Croquet, Croquet <laughs> Clubhouse. <laughs> this grant requires no match or, ob or the other obligation of Metro Parks. Director Odom, are there any comments or? Yes, ma'am. Um, an addition um, that is not included in the caption, but is included um, in your supporting document uh, accompanying this request is a request for the Conservancy to operate that cafe. 
um, and that is included uh, in the um, supporting documents that you have. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Rec Sorry, recommend approval. Thank Sorry. you. Any questions from the board? Okay. Um, so I'm just trying to follow the, the kind of operating uh, <clears throat> portion of it. And will there be a, a separate rental agreement or how will the, um, how will the arrangement be? We would very likely put, a, put an uh, MOU or some sort of an agreement um, revenue sharing agreement in place, yes. Um, in the supporting documents um, that you do have, um, the Conservancy recommends um, placing 80% of the cafe's net income divided evenly into the restricted Centennial Park Maintenance Fund and Parthenon Preservation Fund to cover cost uh, for maintaining the cafe facilities and funding ongoing maintenance beautification and preservation projects in the park and Parthenon. The Conservancy would utilize the remaining 20% of the net income to help fund their organization's general operations, underwrite accessible and inclusive programming in the park and Parthenon, and support their overall efforts to sustain the vibrancy of Centennial Park and the Parthenon. Okay, and just for, so, in, uh, in other words, none of the <clears throat> operating income would come back to parks directly, it would be within the conservancy. Correct. Is that correct. Correct. <clears throat> correct. Just clarifying. Thank yeah, you for and, those and, questions. And, and I, I would add to that, Susanna, if they're going to make a million dollar investment to redo this old historic building, they're taking the risk, um, but they're going to pro provide a great benefit to all those who Thank attend you. Centennial Park, mm -hmm. including bathrooms and food services. So I think it's a good arrangement. Yeah. I, I agree. I'm supportive. Just wanted to clarify. Are there any questions? Other questions or comments? I make a motion. We approve. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 09-22-07 Friends of Mill Ridge Park requests approval to raise funds for the implementation of the farm at Mill Ridge Park. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Is there any discussion from the board? Seeing none, I will accept a motion. Is there a second? It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you so much. The motion passes. 09-22-08, Friends of Warner Park requests acceptance of an in-kind grant to the Metro Parks Department not to exceed $360,000 to fund the next phase of improvements in Warner Parks. This grant requires no match or other obligation of Metro Parks. The proposed improvement projects will include Nature Play Pavilion at Warner Nature Center, $60,000, Hodge House Pavilion, $50,000, and Nature Play Restoration at Warner Park Nature Center, $250,000. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Is there any discussion from the board? Make a motion we approve. Is there a second? been properly moved and second, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you so much. The motion passes. 09-22-10, election of park board officers as per section 1000.4 of the Metro Parks Policy Manual. Nominations are as follows. Chairwoman, Dr. Michelle Steele. Vice Chairman, Mr. George Anderson. Is anyone running from the floor? Susanna? I'm just playing. Is there any, are there any questions? I'll accept a motion. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Congratulations, George Anderson, Vice Chairman of the Board. Thank you so much. We're moving now to special presentations. Um, seven minutes, please. Friends of Atifama Archaeological Park to present annual update to the board. Ridley Willis. Good Ridley afternoon. Wills. Um, Wills, thank you. So I, I don't ha have anything. I have that written. I said it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> um, I get it all the time. So um, uh, at Afama, we have about 225000 in the bank. We were going to build a power. We had, last time we were here, we were going to pare down the whole plan and build this palisade wall uh, along the pal palisade of the original par um, village that had been there. 
However, costs came in at $425,000, and the board decided that it's ridiculous to spend that much money, and the whole idea is just education. So we decided to pull back, declare victory, focus on education. Metro Parks, y'all are installing two signs, one on Hillsborough, one on Old Hickory. We get a website going. Um, we're funding a Tennessee historical marker. It's going to read... Um, created in 2014, this park protects one of the last known archaeologically intact Mississippian period villages in Davidson County. Circa 1250 to 1450 CE, this Native American site was part of a landscape of farms, villages, and mound centers along the Harpeth River, whose culture flourished but then vanished from Middle Tennessee by the mid 1400s CE. The name Atafama means gathering place in Chickasaw, a Muskegon language likely related to that spoken by the Native Americans who built and lived at this site. Um, we are putting it on the southwest corner of the property, right next to Kelly Farm. Kelly Farm is for sale right now for $3.94 million. It houses at least half of this site. Um, unfortunately, the owners have moved their, their uh, the antebellum graveyard gravestones have been removed and taken off site. They've gotten a uh, people who do scan for utility lines to come out and say there's nobody buried there. Um, the state archaeologist whole commission is out there saying, listen, there's a whole lot of Native Americans here. There's, there's an African-American grave, graveyard here, and there's the white graveyard here. You just, y'all don't know what you're talking about. But hopefully, they're trying to get their zoning changed so that they can build a whole bunch of stuff. Hopefully, that won't happen, and it will stay just four houses. Um, we are in discussions right now, actually, with Louise Bryan and um, uh, the Metro Parks Foundation to see about whether we need to even exist as a separate friends group and we could just, you know, be, help fund that, help fund her organization in, in perpetuity for um, Atafama. And so that's, that's where we are. Do you have any questions? Hmm. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Friends of Nashville Tennis to present an annual update to the board. It's my understanding they're not present, so we will reschedule. Uh, Ms. Uh, Jane McLeod, McLeod, I apologize, and Mr. William Hastings, representing Cheekwood Botanical Gardens and Museum of Art to present a report to the board with regards to development on-site parking, development of on-site parking. Great, thank, thank you. you for being here. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. As you know, um, Cheekwood has utilized parkland for the uh, main entrance to Cheekwood since the 1920s. Uh, when there was agreement between the founder, Leslie Cheek, and Parks. And since that time, the institution has flourished, um, last year ranking the third highest attended destination in Nashville. And accordingly, adjacent parkland has been used increasingly. And we want to express our appreciation for the years of memorandum of understanding that allowed for use of those adjacent parklands. Cheekwood would not be what it is today, the third highest attended destination, had we not had the opportunity to use that land. And we really want to say thank you for that. And also as the institution has flourished, so has our ability to be able to help the community and give back. And I wanna just quickly pass out these community impact reports that um, designate exactly how we've been helping the community. Um, but we, um, accordingly, due to this increase in use, um, understand that though it was our preference to continue to use this space and share this space, that this is not what Metro Parks desires. And therefore, we are here today to demonstrate our efforts to show proof of efforts to develop a plan to build an underground parking garage on Cheekwood's property. William Hastings with Hastings Architecture has designed the garage. It's been months in progress, and he is now here to present the concept to you in detail. So thank you. Great. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here today, and thank you for your service to our city. Um, I'm going to uh, go quickly, so I stay within seven minutes, but I want to just begin with um, uh, a quick update of, on a few things that most of you are probably familiar with, but my advancer is not quite working. Hopefully it will. Stephen and I rehearsed this. It worked earlier. I promise. <laughs> Didn't we, Stephen? <laughs> Tell me when. You want me to go again? 
if, uh, if it won't work, we can just advance, if it's possible with the slide advancer work, we can do a little cue the slide advance. Yeah, Cole could do a much better job than me, you know that. Well, well, maybe I'll go ahead so we don't uh, run out of time. But as you know, there's been a great partnership for a long time with Metro Parks where Cheekwood has been able to utilize the parking um, outside of the main property for Cheekwood on Metro Park land. We have uh, been focused over the past 18 months on assembling a, a master planning committee, a strategic planning committee, as well as design professionals and construction professionals to be able to focus our efforts on a long-term solution on Cheekwood's property. So we do, in a minute, we're going to show you some slides um, that will uh, walk you through how we plan to accomplish that. Uh, we did... So people understand the current parking situation. There's about roughly 600 spaces between on campus at, at Cheekwood as well as on Metro Parks land, about 600 spaces, which accommodates our current attendance, which last year was around 425,000 people. Um, this year will uh, be a little different. COVID, just like it did for parks and greenways, you know, a huge spike in usage over the past few years. Cheekwood was a beneficiary of that as well. Um, so maybe this is going to work. Oh, yeah. Now we go. Okay. So uh, just to orient everyone for just a moment, I know you know the land well, but uh, the Percy Warner Golf Course, of course, is in this location. Much of the overflow parking as well as where the main entry um, exists uh, today is in this location. And then the slash dump, which was added uh, to the, um, ultimately, to the parking area. I think it was in 2015, 2016, when this board was so generous to allow us to utilize that area for parking as well. But our focus uh, has been to work on a long-term uh, strategy to park on the property. So our firm has been a part of that, KCI Technology, Brassfield and Gorey, Barge Cawthon, many, many firms who are uh, very rooted in Nashville have been helping with this effort that I'm going to show you today. Um, the the uh, current sp spaces on our, uh, on our property, lot A, which is when you enter through the main gate on the right, it's 86 parking spaces. We have two additional satellite spaces, uh, parking areas, um, sort of serving the uh, learning center as well as um, staff parking, which total about 75 spaces. So we have about 150 spaces currently. There's also the center parking lot in the middle, but as you, if you've been there in recent years, the way ticketing works and the, the interaction between cars and children and others in the middle of the gardens, that's, that parking area has become pretty um, uh, unusable in recent, in recent years. So one thing we did, you'd want us to do this, I know, was, was benchmark 20 different uh, public gardens across the country, peer institutions, just to understand what some of their issues were. We thought we might learn something from best practices. Unfortunately, we, all we learned is everybody struggles with parking uh, is one of the big consistent challenges. But we asked about um, how to analyze the number of spaces, how many people use surface parking versus structured parking. Um, and what were the partnerships with city and state and other uh, uh, not-for-profits and agencies, and ultimately uh, came to the conclusion that we felt like to meet our current need uh, for attendance that we would need to be able to build somewhere around 600 parking spaces on uh, Cheekwood's property. So it's a large parking structure, but we're going to show you how we hope to achieve that. So. We looked at different parts of the property. We went back to the Reed Hildebrand master plan that was completed in 2016. Reed Hildebrand had a recommendation of a parking structure actually in the same location we're going to show you today. We didn't take that as a given. We went back and explored different solutions, but this what did prove to be the best. So just to focus in the area, the area would be replacement of lot A. So lot A, a reminder, is about 85 spaces today. So we would be losing those surface spaces and replacements. We have to put that into our, our calculation. I'm just going to orient you so you can see the, the diagrams a little bit more clearly. Um, so this is the area roughly where lot A is. It's a slight expansion to that area. It's not exactly where the surface parking lot is. Um, but the plan would be that we would uh, ultimately today, this, this site's interesting if you've parked there, it's about 15 feet of grade change. It falls off um, uh, to, the, to the north in this location. And that grade actually works with building a garage that would be subterranean so that 
we'd have as minimal impact on the Cheekwood Gardens as well as on be considerate to the neighbors. So our plan is to build uh, a parking garage uh, in this location. I'll show you in a minute. You are seeing at the top right of the screen, we do think that, there, that the garage would be best served by being able to have a, uh, an access that would be, that would kind of branch off to the right, which, which would be something we would certainly need all of your support and cooperation to be able to achieve that. But that's what that dash line is to the right. Uh, that would allow you to enter the garage at a lower level, so you'd be able to enter at an upper level and a lower level, which we think from a practical standpoint to be able to uh, utilize the garage and have a good visitor experience, that that would be important. So what you're seeing here is a section cut through the site. So to your, to your right would be the far property line. These visuals are a little hard to see. I'm sorry, the screen's a little washed out. But uh, to your left in the distance would be Botanic Hall, for instance. Um, and so at grade, you would see the, the roof of the garage would be even with pretty much where the parking lot is today. Uh, so when you enter the property, that's what you would see. And the garage would be three levels, which roughly is about a 30 foot tall uh, garage. You can see there's a dashed line on this that kind of shows the grade and the grade falls off naturally across this site. So you'd be benching this, this garage into the, uh, into the earth in that location. And then there's about 110 to 120 feet from our right property line with a lot of existing vegetation that would serve as a good buffer um, to the garage. This is cut a section a different direction. This is cut towards the Turner Garden, towards Bot Hall. This is the long end, obviously, of the garage. It shows you the guardhouse uh, to the right, um, which is at the historic gates, and then to the left, the Turner uh, Garden. So there's a lot of grade changes. So these sections, depends on exactly where you take the section as to how the grade change moves. So one thing we did uh, in addition to the, the uh, study was we went back to the Reed Hildebrand plan, which has a master plan for a visitor center, which would replace Bot Hall long term, would be an opportunity to have our ticketing area, the opportunity to have a gift shop, opportunity to kind of have that front experience before you enter into the gardens. Um, we would, if we can be successful in fundraising, the plan is that we would be able to build a visitor center uh, on, integrated in with the garage. It could come at the same time or it could come later if it needed to, but that's gonna be you know, dependent upon fundraising and the ability to raise money. It doubles the price of the project. So we wanna be careful that it didn't get so big by doing this that we're not able to achieve our goal, which is ultimately have parking so we can be sustainable long-term. This is just a quick rendering of that building. It's fairly early concept. Stats are priority one, design and build 600 car garage, approximately $30 million is the estimate that we've received from Brassfield and Gorey, as well as the cost associated with the infrastructure to support it from a stormwater standpoint, everything else that, that we're gonna need to be thoughtful about. Uh, priority two would be the visitor centers on top. Those are both in today's dollars. We all know how that's gonna continue to grow and escalate. So the quicker the better, but we have to raise money. So that's gonna be the, the next steps. So our next steps are, we're gonna engage a consultant to perform a fundraising feasibility study. Um, hope to have the RFP completed for that by the end of this year. Uh, continue to explore the public-private partnerships to fund the garage construction. That is one of the things we learned from the other peer institutions. That's always gonna be a goal. We're not gonna give up on that. Yeah, that's just, we're, we're hopeful that some, that there will be some help, whether that's federal, state, local level, but we're gonna, uh, we recognize this is on us at the end of the day to, to ultimately solve. We communicate the importance of our long-term on-site parking solution to our friends, visitors, and community. That's something we haven't done uh, very well, I would say, in recent, but we are focused on making sure we're doing that moving forward and then present back to you our progress, uh, which we are uh, obligated to do uh, in early Q2, my guess is be March or April board meeting. I don't know the agenda yet for 23 meetings. We present updates on all of this information to you at that time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Are there any questions for Chica Wood, for Mr. Hastings? So Macy, question for you. When does the current MOU expire? Twenty twenty four. I knew that we extended it somewhat recently. So I think for the board's consideration, knowing one, they gotta raise money, two, they gotta build it, in all likelihood, we're gonna need to be accommodating again mm -hmm. for some short term extension. I'm really pleased with the progress they've made. I think that's a very functional, efficient solution. But it is gonna be expensive and they're gonna have to raise the money and in all likelihood we're gonna have to extend that MOU for some minimal period of time. 
William, um, yeah, I agree with what you said, Jeff. Um, talk a little bit about the dotted line. Yeah, to the to the uh, kind of plan top right. <laughs> um, it's not a it's not an absolute, but we think it's really important. And the idea would be that there would be a drive that would be uh, probably 24 feet wide. It'd be a two way drive that would tie into the existing drive that enters into the campus right now. There would be some reworking from the current um, gate, for lack of a better word, into Cheekwood, you know, where that island ends and some other things. We really haven't dug into the details of that yet, George, but um, we think there's some things functionally that don't work well about it right now. So the idea would be to make it better than what's there now. You would, you would come in and go, you would, you would. It's exactly right. And, and hopeful that by getting off of a whole lot of other areas and fixing that, that whatever we do there, that would be a disturbance standpoint that we'd be able to, you know, more than offset that with something else. I, agree with Jeff. I think it's a really great step in the right direction. So. Mm -hmm. And timely. Great. Macy, one other quick question for you. Uh, from a process perspective, do we know if we can just extend the existing MOU and it's a simple act by the board or do you think we're going to have to craft a whole new MOU, which is a different ball game? I would have to see what the wording is in the current MOU. Um, yeah, I, I can research that and, and let you know, but off the cuff, I think that you all could probably as a board extend it. Um, temporarily, it also would not be a big deal to just reuse the terms that are in the current agreement for yeah. 12 months or whatever it is that we yeah. need. I think one of the challenges we've had on this matter is that through no fault of anyone's, there's not been any meaningful progress for a long-term permanent solution. Now they're actually making progress. Mm -hmm. So I'm pleased with that. So I'd rather keep this simple and just am amend and extend the existing MOU as we need to, but in all likelihood, we're gonna to need to. Sure. I'll email you this afternoon. Any other comments? Thank you again. We're gonna move now to capital projects update with Tim Nach. Thank you, I'll be quick. Uh, just highlights, changes from last month. We've kicked off uh, planning for the First and Gay Park site. That's a site that's now Surf about two uh, two acre site on the Cumberland River. It's currently surface parking for the sheriff's department. Although there is a segment of the Cumberland River Greenway on it, and that is going to become a new pocket park for that area um, uh, immediately north of the courthouse downtown. Uh, in Centennial Park, the children's memory garden is scheduled to be completed within a month, and we're working with the committee that has um, been involved there for many many years to schedule uh, a grand opening or a ribbon cutting event there in mid late October. Um, at Clinton Fisk Park, uh, the summer phase of work there has actually been completed. Um, and then we're expecting a delivery of supplemental playground and fitness equipment this fall, which will be installed as the second project. But that uh, playground, basketball court, and fitness equipment is now open to the public. Uh, in Severe Park, as of yesterday, Dowdle, who's the general contractor on that project, has installed all of the erosion control and the construction fencing will go up very soon, um, at which point they will have a approximately a one-year timeline for restoration of Sunnyside Mansion and associated um, site improvements. Uh, Tusculum Road, this is a new 10-acre property in uh, District 30. Um, the, the current project is a master plan. We've launched that and will announce a couple of public meetings uh, for next month. Um, and then with, with Morf, Wharf Park, uh, as was the case last month, we're, we're in wrapping up the master plan, but we need to hold off on a final public meeting until the Metro Planning Department launches their feasibility study for 88 Hermitage, which is an adjacent property that is likely to include affordable housing and does include the uh, historic uh, Tennessee School for the Blind property. That's it. Thank you. Now to Greenway's open space update with Cindy Harrison. Good afternoon. To see if we're still in morning or afternoon. 
Um, I'm gonna run through a few um, that we've been talking about for a while. The Charlotte Corridor Rail with Greenway project, we just completed the community survey September the 2nd. So we're nearing the uh, final draft on that master plan and that will include, of course, um, compilation and report on, on community input as well as routing on that trail. Uh, tonight, East Bank Draft Plan Planning Department is holding a community meeting specifically for greenways and parks for input and that is going to be at the Metro Office Building, the Old Howard School from 6 to 7.30. So if you can make it, that would be great. We'd love to see you there. Um, planning is running that meeting. We're just there to, to listen. Um, and then there's also a survey ongoing. So just wanna let you all know about that. The 440 Greenway Severe Park to Browns Creek. Um, we're continuing design on that. We'll be having a community meeting soon. The Opry Mills Connector uh, project, the resolution for the very last easement and license agreement on that was just passed um, by council uh, on the 6th. So we will be headed towards um, bidding later in the year. So we're excited about that. Cumberland River Greenway at Wharf Park. Um, we are doing a feasibility study to look at extensions of that uh, Greenway, the possibility of, of future connections. The um, Stones River Greenway and Whites Creek Greenway trailhead upgrades that our friends, um, Greenways for Nashville are working on. Those updates on the Stones River Greenway are completed. So if you're out there, take a look. They look really great. And the um, Whites Creek Greenway out at Hartman Park should be installed in two weeks. So we're happy to, very appreciative of those upgrades. Uh, we have two new segments of Greenway that are being proposed in future developments out on Pennington Bend. Um, so there's a Pennington Mills that will come to Planning Commission soon. That's an SP and that's an 11 acre project as a short segment of Greenway. And then another project right now, the Bend North Gate, it's a 220 acre development. And we're looking at uh, a Greenway easement and possible construction of that on that property. Uh, the Gulch Greenway at Trailhead is sure, and I think many of you were at the August 4th ribbon cutting. So we are um, happy to have that open to the public. The Cumberland River Greenway Metro Center Levy Trailhead project uh, being constructed by Wood Partners is under construction now. Uh, if you go down there, you'll see some stakes and layout for that. Um, Cumberland River Greenway at River North, just that project is moving forward. They've recently gone through stormwater variants um, on the section is known as the South Greenway. So that project is moving forward and parks is is at the table at that. Um, the Harpeth River Greenway, Ariza Bellevue project, I've mentioned this each meeting, that is a residential multifamily proposed project, SP project, um, out at the kind of the far end of our um, Greenway there. It's next to the Frist, the property that was donated by the Frist Foundation. It's coming to Planning Commission on October 13th and does propose some Greenway improvements. Um, we don't know what the Planning Commission will say on that, but uh, stay tuned on that. And Tim may have mentioned, and I'm sorry I wasn't listening, <laughs> Centennial Park. Uh, we're looking at some additional Greenway connections within, within the park, and I don't know if you touched on that, but anyway. Uh, and then as far as future land acquisitions, we're working with the Trust for Public Land and 10 Green on an additional four acre um, addition to Lachlan Springs Park. And that should be coming to you all hopefully in October. That's it. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. We're moving to upcoming special activities and events with Jackie Jones. So good afternoon. So this edition of the September Park Board events 
is called What About Our Friends? We have a number of our friends groups who are having fundraisers. Before I get into those, though, I do want to let you know or call to your attention uh, the African Street Festival at Hadley Park beginning on the 16th. Uh, Jazz on the Cumberland begins at 5.30 p.m. at Cumberland Park on the 18th. So now, what about our friends? We have Dinner by the Bridge Thursday, October 6th uh, at Cumberland Park. Uh, if you need more information on that, you can log on to www.dinnerbythebridge.com. And that benefits uh, our Greenways Division. We also have... Uh, the Nashville Parks Foundation invites you to picnic for the parks. That is uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. on Saturday, September 24th at Fort Negley. Uh, you can get more information on that particular event at the Nashville Parks Foundation website. Then on September 18th, we have the Golden Pheasant Triathlon. And uh, that is, uh, it benefits Friends of Shelby Park. Uh, it's a fun kayak, bike, run, uh, a single distance event that celebrates the search for the mysterious bird, the golden pheasant, uh, one of Nashville's most, in, in one of Nashville's most beloved parks. We also have the full moon picky party from 6 to 10 p.m. at Warner Parks. I think most of you all are familiar with that. Uh, I believe this is the last event of the se season uh, is scheduled from 6 to 10 p.m. on September 17th. And finally, we have the Outdoor Cinema, uh, which is uh, sponsored by the Friends of Mill Ridge Park. That event is scheduled for next Saturday. Uh, the location is 12965. Old Hickory Boulevard in Antioch, Tennessee. So that concludes my report. Are there any questions? Thank you so much. You are welcome. Moving to the report of the director, Director Odom. Thank you, ma'am and park board. Uh, my report is brief as well. Um, we have started, the department has started uh, preliminary planning discussions with um, OMB and the mayor's office for our FY23 capital spending plan items and requests. Um, at this point, the bulk of those, um, it's looking like the bulk of those will be uh, deferred maintenance types of issue, types of uh, requests. So um, uh, building mechanical, paving playgrounds, tennis courts, things like that for upkeep of the park system. Um, so we are looking at that. Uh, I would mention that um, we are um, waiting on a cost estimate on a uh, facilities conditions assessment for um, uh, both paving and uh, buildings in, in the park system. Uh, we've needed that for a long time and have, uh, are looking for a cost estimate, and I don't know if we'll get that back in time to put it into, uh, to request it for this CSP, but we will certainly make a future request uh, to get, kind of get the lay of the land of um, the conditions beyond um, what we see and what is reported anecdotally so we can have some uh, substantive data um, to help us, you know, um, more accurately um, um, disperse funds across the system in an equitable manner. Um, you all, as a reminder, you all should have received an email from the Metro clerk requesting that you all uh, complete <laughs> Uh, a survey and submit the information. I think it has a due date of Friday, but I did just want to, to remind you all of that. And if you, if you have not received that, if you'll reach out to Larisha, I think she has a copy of it, she can send you. Um, and then uh, finally on Friday, September 16th, 16th um, Ms. Amos and I will be at the Tennessee Historical Commission for a hearing uh, regarding the renaming of Hadley Park request. That's all I have. Questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving now to announcements, requests for future agenda items and open items. We have an update uh, on East Bank with Jeff Hain. Yeah, as Cindy mentioned, there is a meeting tonight. This is a really important planning process for our city to really set the stage for the next 50 years. I would encourage you all to attend tonight. If you can attend, 
we are going to discuss this and vote on this on October 6th at the Planning Commission. We need your feedback. Um, we're dealing with over 300 acres. It's going to make significant improvements for parks, greenways, transit. Um, this is a really important foundational tool for our city to have great planning and it's gonna impact parks and greenways. So we need your feedback. Thank you so much. All righty, I want to recognize uh, the presence of Councilwoman Angie Henderson. Thank you so much. Do you want to address the body? Thank you so much for your time today. Are there any other announcements, requests for future agenda items or open items from the board? Uh, hearing none, we have the meeting on September 26th at 6 p.m. We'll see you then. Otherwise, I will accept a motion for adjournment. Thank you so much. You all are free to go. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.